Okay folks, this video is to show you two things. One is to confirm how O2 sensor eliminators work on VFR 800s when provided by Power Commander. Uh, they're effectively a 330 ohm resistor across two of the O2 sensor pins. Which pins is the uh, question that was initially asked and the answer to that, if I grab my O2 sensor here, eliminator, is... Ooh, we're gonna get focus on that? Maybe not. No focus. Anyway, the pins it uses is <coughs> the heater wire pins. An O2 sensor eliminator from Power Commander does not connect to the actual O2 sensor itself, just to the heater wires. It effectively tells the ECU that an O2 sensor is there. The reason that works is because when the O2 sensor is connected, even connected, when it's cold, it effectively acts as an open circuit, i.e. there's no way for an ECU to tell if an O2 sensor is there just by looking at the sensor wires. This is because an O2 sensor is a chemical voltage generator. Much like when you stick pins into a lemon, you can get, or an orange, you can get voltage out of it. Same thing applies to an O2 sensor. When you heat it up and get oxygen readings to it, it will start generating voltage anywhere between 0.1 and 1.0 volts. 0, 0.0 and 0 0.1 means it's lean over 15 to 1 air fuel ratio and close to 1.0, 0, 0.9 to 1.0 means rich or what it classes as 14 to 1. So between 14 to 1 and 15 to 1 is a very narrow band, hence the name of this, a narrow band O2 sensor. Unlike the box you'll see in the picture which is for an auto tune, which is for a wide band O2 sensor and has much more accuracy and can read much finer uh, degrees of air fuel ratio anywhere from 11 up to like 16, 17 and higher. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to heat up that O2 sensor uh, with a propane torch and you'll see as it gets hot the resistance will decrease and once the resistance of the device decreases it will start to generate a voltage relevant to the amount of oxygen it is seeing which would equate in a car to an air fuel ratio in the exhaust. In this case, we're going to blast it with a propane torch and it's measuring the amount of oxygen left in the propane flame. So here we go, if I can light it. My propane torch is a little bit... Here we go. I have a nice blue flame. I'm going to hold that against the O2 sensor here until it heats up. So first thing will happen is it will heat up. The heating action will cause the resistance in the O2 sensor of the uh, chemical materials in there to decrease, allow it to start reading, and then it will start reading the oxygen reading. Here we go. It's climbing. Excuse my sniffing, I have a cold again. And as soon as I take the flame away, it should drop very quickly. So, as you can see, the ECU in your vehicle does not generate a voltage signal to be sent to the O2 sensor. The O2 sensor generates voltage chemically, and it is the ECU which reads that voltage and makes a determination as to what that means. In this specific case, I've just shown an O2 sensor which when heats up reads uh, a fairly rich uh, reading, 0.8 I think it hit, and as soon as I took the flame away it rapidly dropped. If you have an O2 sensor which within 20 seconds of being heated shows that reading climb and then when you take the, uh, the heat away it immediately drops, that is a sign of a working O2 sensor. Fundamentally if you get that quick uh, rise up after 20 seconds and an immediate drop after you take the flame away, your O2 sensor is working fine. But yes, so we've confirmed two things. One, uh, basically this O2 sensor works, not that I care because I don't use it, and two, that the O2 eliminators provided by Power Commander for a VFR 800 are not touching the sensor signal. They are just fooling the ECU into thinking a O2 sensor is there based on the fact there's a circuit detected on the heating element wire. So what does this mean for your fuel map? What it means for your fuel map is that 
the O2 sensor reading will be 0.0, .0 at all times. This will cause the ECU to think that the engine is running lean and will at least temporarily uh, maximise the uh, fuel trims to the rich side. Uh, doing some research it appears that the default behaviour for many ECUs is that if it pegs at rich say one, uh, zero point, sorry, if it pegs at 0, 0.0 volts for more than three minutes the ECU will treat that as a fault condition and will go to a mid-range fuel map so it won't stay pegged at uh, maximum enrichment trim. Apparently, it will likely go somewhere in the middle. Either way, it's considered to be quote unquote too rich, but it does mean that you will end up with a static map which you can work on as a base for power commander tuning.